Hi, my name is James Barry. I'm a professional photographer and I've put down some of the things I've learned over the years on these video clips to help people that are starting in photography. If you like what you see, maybe consider coming on of our training courses that we run here in the studio in Sussex. The first aspect of exposure we're going to look at is going to be about the aperture. Have a look at this simple diagram. The arrows on the left are indicating the light that's coming in and hitting our lens. Now when the light hits the lens, because of the shape, the light is slightly bent and ends up being focused on the sensor. Now the distance between the lens and the sensor when the items that we're looking at are in focus is known as our focal length. And this is quite important and we'll come into some mathematics that we're going to talk about later. Now our camera has to be able to work on a bright day when there's lots of light coming into the camera and also on a dull day when there's less. And one of the ways that it copes with this is to have a system very similar to the iris in our eye. It's known as an aperture. And what it's doing is effectively reducing the size of the lens that's being used. When the aperture is fully open, then a lot of light can come through the lens and actually hit the sensor. But when we close that aperture down, only the central part of the lens is being used and the amount of light is reduced. I'm going to throw some maths in here and it explains this F number which is the number we use when we're dealing with apertures. Let's pretend we're using a portrait lens which has a focal length of 100 millimetres and that would be typical digital camera which has a full frame sensor. If the size of the aperture that we were using was 50 millimetres then by dividing that focal length by the diameter of that aperture we get that F number. So in this situation we've got a 50 mil diameter and therefore we get F2. If we reduce the size of that aperture to 25 millimetres then we'd end up with F4. We'd have 100 divided by 25. The difference between F2, the 50 millimetres, and F25, F4, is four times. Because we're dealing with the area here. The area of a circle with a diameter of 50 millimetres is four times that of a circle with a diameter of 25 millimetres. Now in photography, we're always dealing with halving or doubling the amount of light that we actually need. And by halving or doubling the area, we can actually move one unit in photography, or as we call it, one stop. Here, we're moving two units, because we're not halving, but we're quartering. So from a photographic point of view, we would want one unit in between this. And here we can see that if we had an aperture of, with a diameter of 35 millimetres, then we would get the number in between. It would have half the area. If you look at this diagram here, it gives us all the major F numbers used in a lens. You can see the number 2, 4, and then we're doubling 4 to get 8, doubling 8 to get 16, and doubling 16 to get 32. But we have numbers in between these because the numbers I've just mentioned, we are always quartering the amount of light that's going through the lens. As we need to halve it, we need these intermediate numbers. So we get 2.8, 5.6, which is of course twice 2.8, F11, which is nearly twice 5.6, and then F22. These are the major numbers that you want to remember. And the important thing that you have to think about is that if we move from one number to the next number, we are either halving or doubling the area of our lens and therefore doubling or halving the amount of light going into our camera. On a digital camera there are numbers in between these because most digital cameras work in third stops. One of the very confusing things about these F numbers is remembering 
that if we have a small f number, something like f2, then it's a large hole. Whereas if we have a small hole, it's a large f number. Have a look at the front of the lens you've got on your camera and you'll see some markings on there. It will tell you the focal length in millimetres. If you have a zoom lens, it will tell you the range. You'll also see on there a 1 followed by a colon followed by the smallest f number that your lens can manage. With some zoom lenses, this smallest number will vary according to what focal length you're using on your zoom. Now why should we worry about this? Why do we care when we've got a camera on automatic what f number the camera has decided to use when we're taking a photograph? Well there is a major effect that the aperture has. In this diagram we're demonstrating the depth of field that we get if we're using a low f number, in other words a large hole. Whatever we focus on, we we'll get very little else in focus in front or behind that focus point. However, if we have a very large f number, a very small hole, much, much more of the photograph will be in focus. If you get confused about whether it's a, a big hole or a big f number, a very simple way of remembering it is the F number represents the number of things in focus. So if we've got F2, we've got two things in focus. If we've got F22, we could have 22 things in focus. It's a little bit of a simple rule of thumb, but it's an easy way to remember it. Here's two photographs taken with different apertures. The photograph on the left is taken with an aperture of 2.8, and you can see that it's only a few of the flowers that are in focus, whereas the one on the right hand side, taken at f16, just about every single flower that we can see is in focus. So as a photographer, taking our camera off automatic and actually deciding for ourselves what sort of f number we should be using gives us far more control over the camera and we can decide whether we want backgrounds in or out of focus.